Hello friends, so today I'm going to talk about the circle of fifths, how to master it on the keyboard. So I made a video way back, um, but I just wanted to revisit it. Uh, I have a better video set up here, a better keyboard. Uh, I thought it'd just be easier to follow with an updated video. So before we get started, I wanted to provide some motivation, like why, why practice circle of fifths? Um, it's really hard to convince students to do it. Uh, so I'm always trying to point out, hey, look in this music here. Here's a circle of fifths. Uh, that opening that I played you, uh, Brahms, he used the circle of fifths as kind of a dramatic device. Just straight up uh, circle of fifths, uh, you know, E flat, A flat, D flat, uh, G half diminished, C, and then a deceptive cadence back to D flat. But pretty much just circle of uh, fifths there. So another example is the uh, Schubert Impromptu. He has this section that goes like... Yeah, just straight up circle fifths in E flat minor. So that's uh, a diatonic circle fifths, which we'll get to. Um, Jazz examples, so of course, like like autumn leaves. Anyway, uh, so that's in G minor. It starts in uh, on the four chord. So C to F to B flat, E flat, two five one back to G minor. Uh, and of course, there's uh, all the things you are. Yeah, it's just a bunch of circle of fifths progressions in these like key areas. All right, so let's get started with these exercises. I'm gonna put all the timestamps of every exercise that I go through. They're gonna lead up from really simple and get harder and harder as they go. So the first exercise is going to be descend by fifths down the keyboard. So you're gonna to wanna to probably start all the way at the top because you're gonna run out of notes real fast. So C, descend by fifth, because that's how it usually is in music. You're usually not ascending by fifth on the circle of fifths. You're usually descending. So a two, five, one, or a six, two, five, one. Most of the time in music, it's falling by fifth. So C, go down a fifth, F, down to B flat, not to B. So F to B flat. And we made it. Had to use the whole keyboard. Okay, so the other thing you could do is you could invert it. You could go up uh, by fourth. So if we, we could go down by fifth to get to F, you could also go up by a fourth and also get to F. So let's start down here and we'll just go up by fourths. There we go. Almost ran out of keys. All right. The next step, we want to be a little more efficient, so we're going to alternate between going down a fifth and up a fourth, and then we'll use way less space on the keyboard. So we'll go down a fifth, up a fourth. So like this, teeter-totter, back and forth. You could also start by going up a fourth instead. And again, with all these, you're going to want to provide as much variation on these as possible because you, really, you don't just want to like memorize one way of doing it because like that's not how music works. So start on any key. Let me start on A flat and go up by fourth and, uh, to start. You're always going to want to end up where you started. All right, so there's single notes. You can do it in both hands. The next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to play different notes in the hands. So let's just start with major thirds. So maybe space it out and go. Okay, and then you could also do minor thirds. Okay. 
So that's two notes. The next step is to do triads. So we're just gonna do major triads. Okay, uh, you can do minor triads. And if that's tricky, which it will be if this is new to you, don't lose track of where your thumb is. So your thumb is going to just follow that single note back and forth pattern that we did right at the beginning. So just practice your thumb if you need to, just to get the, the motion down. Uh, and then uh, if the triad's too much for you, just do the first two notes. add the third. You can also add the left hand. Okay, so there's just plain vanilla triads. The next thing we're going to do is do triad inversions. So the thing we want to do, if you notice, between this C chord and this F chord here, there's a common note, is this C. So let's not move the C, let's just keep it there. Let's be a lot more economical. So we're gonna go from here to here. And we're just gonna move it down. Now you can add the left hand, maybe kind of ground you so you know what chord you're on. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. Okay, so there's like chord inversion variation one. So you could also start here. So instead of starting on C here, you could start up here. Uh, first inversion, right? With the third on the bottom. Okay, and then the last inversion, which is, I, I think it's the trickiest because the moving notes are now on the outside. All right, this common note here is in the middle. Okay, and again, you can play it with the left hand. The next step of that is now we're just gonna do triad inversions only moving up the keyboard. So what I mean by that is we can be even more like economical with our, our voice movement, what we would call voice leading, right? So if you notice between this F chord and this next B flat chord, this F is the common note. So I was going down here, which is technically like a movement. So we're gonna go here instead. And then back to here. So the common note is always gonna stay the same. Yeah, and you keep going. All right, and then yeah, you could play the left hand as well with that. kind of ground you. If it helps, say the letter names out loud. Uh, the biggest mistake I see is uh, students going a diminished fourth or something, or, or sorry, diminished fifth, where they should be doing a perfect fourth, so they'll do something like this. They'll go there instead, or they'll end up on B major even. They'll do something like something weird like that. So uh, if, you, if you make those kinds of mistakes, go back to the very beginning and just do single notes. If you have that mastered, you can kind of build up from there. So that's a mistake I see all the time. All right, so that was triads and their inversions. The next step is to do seventh chords. So if we take a C major seventh chord, and we're gonna play the root of the chord, like the letter name of the chord C in the left hand, and then we're gonna just take the third, and the seventh of the chord in the right hand. So, like jazz piano, we would call that a shell. So the third and the seventh. So we're just gonna go around the circle of fifths this way with the third and the seventh. This is very similar to the, like the, like the second or third exercise where you just played major thirds. We're gonna add this seventh now. Yeah, it's kind of skippy, right? So we'll fix that. Uh, so 
So get this, you can also invert it. So instead of playing this fourth here, flip this E up and do it here too. Okay, so the next step on that is we want to be, again, more economical with our, our note movement. So if you notice between here this C chord and this F chord, the E was the same. So we're going to keep the E there. And then we're just going to move through the circle of fifths. There's always going to be one note that stays the same and one note that changes. So a couple patterns to notice is that the note that changes is going to alternate between the top note and the bottom note. All right, there's the top note. This next one is going to be the bottom note, the bottom note in the right hand. Okay, the other pattern is that you're going to be only moving by whole step. Not here, whole step in the right hand. So the note that moves is always going to move by whole step. Okay, so that's major seventh chords. We can also do minor seventh chords. So just take both of these and lower them a half step, but keep the root the same. So C, minor seven, the third and seven. Okay, and the pattern's the same. So we're just gonna go down, keep the note that stays the same between C and F minor seven. And again, make sure you're starting from everywhere on the keyboard. So just pick something random. Start here instead. And end up where you started. So don't stop at C, right? Okay, so we've done major seventh chords, minor seventh chords. The last thing you should do is the dominant seventh chord. And this motion's a little different. So a dominant seventh chord remember is major triad minor seventh on top. We're going to take the third and the seventh in the right hand, root in the bass. So if we look at C dominant seven going to F dominant seven, both notes change now, but they change by only a half step. So this E is going to become this E flat that was up here, right? So I think once you see this pattern, it's almost easier. You're just going to move that tritone down by half step every time. That kind of idea. Uh, and then you're going to want to practice the inversion of that too. So if you started here, flip the E up and start here instead. Okay. So once you have that, you could also, this would be more in the realm of like a jazz sounding chords, or maybe Debussy, you're doing like these chord extensions, so the ninth, that kind of thing. So what we would call the shell plus a pretty note. So the ninth of the chord. And that becomes the 13th. So yeah, this is a little strange sounding, um, but you hear this all the time in jazz. Uh, this kind of movement. So here you go. You're going to end up with this third, seventh, ninth. This motion stays the same, right? This this core element. I'm just added the the note on top. Whoops. Yeah, these get a little more tricky. Uh, okay, and you could also do like minor versions of that. So you did just, we just did major seventh chords with the ninth or the 13th, right? If you did this F chord, this D here is the 13th or the add six. So let's do the minor. A little more dissonant, right?
yeah, that's maybe a stretch. Um, but certainly doable, certainly usable. So it's a good kind of mental exercise. The next step, like you could, you could keep playing, pushing that, but let's move into a different type of exercise. We're just going to do diatonic, uh, circle of fifths. So what I mean by that is we're just going to stay in one scale or one key. So if we just took all the white keys, we'd be in C major. So, uh, if we started at C, we'd go C, not B flat, we would go to B, and then we're back to C major. So we've played the seven chords within the key itself. So instead of going around all 12 keys around the circle, you're going all through, through all seven chords in the, like the scale or the key you're in. So for major, and you could, you could do pretty much all the exercises that we just did, but just for that key. So for example, we could do uh, just the third. So the trick with this is it's not going to be just minor or just major chords. It's going to mix depending on where you are in the scale. So if we're starting in C major, we're going to be the major third, major third, minor third, minor third, minor third, minor third, major, major, right? Uh, and you can also do, uh, you could do triads. Sorry, major. And inversions, like I said, you could do all the exercises there. So the thing, here we could also do the minor scale. So there's a little trick with the minor scale um, when it deals with the, the seven chord. So let's go through that real quick. Let's do uh, some inversion. So we're gonna go here. So that'd be major. So if we wanna do minor, usually we would go here and then go to like E flat. So you wanna be careful, you wanna use actually the flatted seventh in this case, where you're using it as the, um, the five chord going to the three. So if you look at C minor, sometimes it'd be natural, sometimes it'd be flat. The relative major of C minor is E flat, meaning it shares the same collection of notes. Okay, and in order to get to E flat, we can use this dominant seventh chord, which is the, like the flatted seventh of the key. So again, let's go back to our exercise where we're doing these, these chord inversions. So we're gonna go one to four, flatted seven. It kind of sounds like we're in E flat, right? We're gonna come around. Instead of going to D flat, because D flat's not in the key of C minor, we're gonna go to D natural. So again, now it kind of sound like, uh, you know, Baroque music, Vivaldi or something, right? Uh, use that quite a bit. So, and a common device to, when you start in the, yeah, in the minor key to get to its relative major key, you'll see this in like little Bach pieces or something, right? That, uh, in order to modulate to the major key, you'll use the flatted seventh to get there. So if you're in C minor, you're gonna use the, to get to E flat, and then to get out of it, you'll do the, you'll, you'll introduce that B natural again to get back to uh, the original key of C minor. All right, from here, uh, you could explore and do lots of other kind of variations. So right now we've only done root like root notes in the bass. So kind of a tricky thing to practice would be, let's do something other than roots in the bass. So let's try the third of the chord. So what if we were in C major and we went, started here in this spacing with the third, and we're gonna go a third of the chord to root of the chord, third of the chord to the root. Like that. So that makes kind of a, a nice sounding uh, progression. We can also do that in minor. 
right? B flat. You could experiment with doubling. Doubling notes so here. Doubling, doubling the outer voice. This is like Brahms does this all the time, right? That kind of thing. Uh, you could also double the other note. I know technically in like a theory book they'll say the, you know, first inversion chord always double the fifth. But like in practice, I see it all the time. I see Brahms will do this or this, kind of like equally. It gives it this nice like open spacious sound. Uh, so yeah, here. So we started here. Let's do this one now. That sounds nice, and then do the uh, do the minor version. Let's play octaves in the bass. That's kind of fun. And then obviously do these in all keys. So I just did C and C minor, but pick random keys. Get used to doing them. So what if we did? Let's see here. Let's do that in G sharp minor. It's kind of like the hardest thing I can think of. So. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I made it. I made it. Yeah, so make sure you do all keys and get comfortable with it. Uh, what if you played, instead of going third of the chord to root of the chord in the bass, go third to third, third to third. So kind of a, Brahms kind of likes to do this. It's very kind of unstable sounding. Uh, so let's let's just do plain old C major. So you're gonna go like that kind of thing. Third of the chord here. We got a C chord, and then we're gonna go third of the chord here. Okay. And it doesn't even sound finished, right? It's because these uh, these first inversion chords are kind of unstable. They they don't feel resolved like they should keep going on to something else right anyway so there's a bunch of ideas to explore dominant or, or circle fifths exercises like going through all 12 keys and also diatonic circle of fifths exercises where you're just staying in one key so just using chords from c major or c minor for example anyway i hope that was helpful and you learn to master these circle of fifths uh, happy practicing